Most subsea power cables consist of a power conductor made out of a copper or aluminum, which transmits power at specific voltages and currents depend on requirements. Outside of this layer, there are additional insulation, protective and outer layers. Following extensive design and a customization according to client's requirements, the manufacturing process begins with the construction of the conductor. Typically small wires or metal are tightly wound into the larger conductor core, which forms the central section of the cable. An insulation layer is then applied over the conductor and it's made of either EPR. Both materials are well suited to high voltage power cable applications. They have been commonly used for many years in subsea application. They are lightweight, which makes them excellently suited to larger delivery lines and both of these installation materials have outstanding electrical and mechanical properties. A three-phase subsea power cable typically incorporates three insulted conductor cores, as well as other components such as a fiber optic cables. Subsea production, on the other hand, almost always includes many different components to suit a greater mix of power and control functions needed offshore on subsea. For example, thermoplastic hoses provides hydraulic veil, control function and a low voltage cables are used for communications both of which GDR manufactures in-house. Alternatively, hydraulic functions can be provided by steel tubes. When the water depth of the distance to shore of development requires a different approach. In short, every production is different and is designed to meet specific customer requirements.
The final stage of the insulted internal layer involves horizontal and vertical lay-pop machines. Machines are used to twist these internal components into a helix to form the cable of umbilical bundle. The process of twisting enables the composite bundles to bend much tighter than in the function work straight, enabling the power cable or umbilical to be shipped into installed with a greater ease. Given the harshness of the environment in which a subsea cable must survive, they have to be developed with a strain in mind. This is where the armoring layer comes in, frequently made from coal galvanized steel. This layer provides mechanical protection, tensile strain and impact protection. The use of steel in the armoring layer also gives the whole cable considerable weight for stability on the seabed. This is an important consideration of the design of all subsea cables, most notably because they must withstand strong and frequently unpredictable seabed currents, for example in the stormy North Sea conditions. Finally, another sheet of rowing cases, all of the other layers. A shed is a frequently made from a continuously extruded thermoplastic material such as a polyethylene, which has the physical strength and moisture resistance capabilities ideal for subsea cables. Alternative polypropylene revolving may be used depending on the application. One Ord's first cable laying vessel for construction offshore wind parks, Nexus. This modern vessel is an early 123 meters long and more than 27 meters in the beam. The Nexus has been equipped with a cable carousel with a capacity of the 500 tons to install long export cables. The deck layout is in the results of the Haas engineering and development in artification of the future market requirements for challenging cable installation works. Their accommodation for 90 people on board, Nexus is the Latin word for connection, a suitable name for a ship that will connect offshore wind turbines with each other and to the mainland. 